Have you ever wanted to take your photography to the next level and capture images with extraordinary detail and color accuracy? Well, today we're going to talk about the Nikon Z63 Pixel Shift feature, which can help you do just that. This innovative technology takes your photos to a whole new level while enhancing detail and color like never before. As photographers, we often face challenges when it comes to capturing fine details and colors accurately in our photos. The Nikon Z6 3 Pixel Shift feature addresses these challenges by combining multiple images to create a single high-resolution photo. By shifting the sensor in tiny increments between shots by a single pixel or less, the camera captures multiple images, which are then merged together to produce a final photo with unparalleled detail and color precision. Bayer sensors only have the ability to capture one component of RGB per pixel. Because of that, the other two values are interpolated based on the surrounding pixels. The interpolation of the pixel causes more moiré and color fringing. However, by shifting pixels, all of the exact RGB values can be determined for each pixel location. To go further than getting just the colors correct, by shifting at increments down to half a pixel, higher resolution images can be produced. And from there, the noise can be averaged and reduced using NX. Studio. So with that, let's take a look at some of the uses for pixel shift shooting. So as I briefly mentioned, these can be used for creating high resolution images. Uh, those can be great for printing or if you need to crop into an image to get closer detail out of it. Additionally, you can use it for reducing noise in images and you can also increase your dynamic range by using it. As I mentioned, you can use it to reduce moiré and color fringing. You can also improve color reproduction. And this can all be great for uses such as macro photography, product photography, and landscapes, although landscapes can be tricky due to limitations. So that brings me into my next topic, what are the limitations with pixel shift imaging? So the most important item for this is that your scene has to be completely still as moving objects will produce mosaics. Additionally, heat haze and mirages, those can also produce issues with these type of images. If you're out shooting landscapes, one thing to be aware of is that the clouds are moving that could potentially mess up your photos. And then also you can get uneven color that can be produced. So having a still scene is one part of it, but also making sure that your camera doesn't move is another. So making sure that the wind or any vibrations don't move your camera as those will affect your image. In addition, any changes to brightness in a scene will cause banding or mosaics. So think about clouds passing by the sun where you get a change in brightness. Um, you also could have changing light during a sunset or a sunrise, or if you've got any blinking or flickering lights in an image, or just that you've got an inconsistent flash that doesn't produce the same color every time and the same brightness. And then one note on this topic is that it's always better to go higher with your ISO with a shorter exposure than it would be to go with a lower ISO and a longer exposure because the longer that you're exposing, the more opportunity that you have for something to move within your image. So now that I've discussed some of the uses and also limitations, Let's take a look at some of the settings for this. So there's several functions that you are allowed to use when you're in pixel shift imaging. So with flash photography, the most important item here is to make sure that you've got your interval set long enough so that your flash has the chance to recharge. Additionally, you need a good flash that's always going to be consistent with its colors and its brightness. Moving on, there's also a tone mode that's available in the Nikon Z6 III. So you can go into an HLG mode and that can be used to get HEIF copies with a high dynamic range. However, if you do this, noise reduction will not be available to you. And then the final one is that you can change the image area of your image from your standard full frame crop into any of the other crop modes. If you've enjoyed this video so far, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button down below. And also please be sure to hit the subscribe button down below so that you can see my videos in the future and help me grow my channel. So let's take a look at the settings that come in the camera now. Looking here at the pixel shift shooting menu, uh, you've got the first option here, which is where you would turn pixel shift shooting mode to the on or the off. Uh, so if you wanna take more than just one set of images at a time, uh, you would go ahead and set this to be on series mode. But if you just wanna take one photo, you can set it to single photo or you can leave it to off. So let's go back to the main menu here because the next thing that you're gonna set is the number of shots that you wanna take. Now this is gonna affect what options you have available to you when you get into your editing on NX Studio. So what I recommend is always just go ahead and take the 32 shots. That way you'll have all of the options available to you in NX Studio. But if you wanna take a look at these, the options you get are for 32, 16, eight, and four. 
And one nice thing here is it does give you the details down below of what you can get when you use each of these different number of shot options. Uh, when we go to the delay, this is a delay for just the start, so for the first shot that you take. I would honestly recommend probably shooting somewhere above 5 seconds, so either doing 5 seconds or shooting 10 seconds. And that's just to make sure that you don't have any vibration going on in your camera, and you give the camera a chance to be still. So we'll just set that to 5 for now. And then the interval until next shot, this is going to be the amount of time going from 0 all the way up to 30 seconds. And what this is going to do is tell you how much time the camera is going to wait between each one of those shots that you have set for it to take. So where this is important, like I've mentioned, is if you're doing flash photography, you need to make sure that your flash has time to recharge. This is where you set that interval. And with that, you're ready to shoot. So all you do is being in the on mode is you just at this point hit the shutter release button and you'll be able to start doing your pixel shift shooting. I want to take a quick break here and give a huge shout out to my sponsor for this video Fort Worth Camera. Fort Worth Camera offers the latest gear and accessories for both professionals and beginners both in store and online. Their expert staff is ready to help you find the perfect camera and accessories to capture your world. You can try out gear before you buy through their rental services. From lenses to tripods, drones to lighting, they've got everything you need. Also, don't forget to check out their Funky Town Focus event every May for exclusive deals and workshops. Again, big thanks to Fort Worth Camera for sponsoring this video and supporting my channel. Channel. So now that you know the settings and you've captured a set of images, the next question is going to be is how do you produce this imaging? All right, so the first thing that you're going to have to do to be able to go through and do pixel shift imaging is downloading the Nikon NX Studio app. So you can get to that by going here to the Nikon Download Center and within here you'll pick the version that fits your computer, go through the download page, and then you can install it. And then after you've done that, you can go ahead and open up NX Studio. So once you're in NX Studio, uh, if you've never used it before, it is similar to Lightroom. So it should be pretty familiar for you to be able to get to first. So if I wanna go in and stack these images using pixel shift imaging, when I go in here, I'm gonna find the images that I shot using pixel shift imaging on the camera. And I can go in here and you'll see up here in the top right corner, that this little button is highlighted and can be used. So let's go ahead and click this. It'll open up a option menu now. So what this has done is it's gone through and it has detected all of these photos that you can see down here on the bottom. And now it's gonna give us the options of how we want to go through and actually process these images. So looking at this one here, you can see that the number of shots that I took with the camera was 32. So we'll just go ahead and select this one for now. Uh, the first settings here, you've got, do you want to generate one image? Do you want to generate two images, four images, or eight images? So if you want to get the biggest image possible, you're going to want to hit the one. Or if you want to take the first half of the images and the second half of the images to create your pixel shift merge, then you're going to go ahead and click generate two images. And the same can be said for the four and the eight options. However, when you go into those options, you'll lower the resolution that you can get. The first and the second being the only two that can do a higher resolution. When you get into the options for four and eight, you'll only be able to do a color and a noise reduction at that point. So one thing here, if you're confused, um, you can go ahead and click that click here button. And this will give you a lot of in-depth details here of how the pixel shift merging works, where you can see what happens when you select one, two, four or eight, depending on how many images you started with. Let's say you only took four images originally. You would only have the option to generate a single image at that point. So merging is performed once to generate one image from four images. So then when you look at eight original images and you want to do one, you get the same thing here, one image from eight images. Or if you do two, you can generate two images from four images each. So moving down the line, you'll see the same thing here at 16. Uh, you can either do one image or four images. And you'll notice there's another bullet point in here where this is now where you can start to get doubling of your resolution. Same thing that you'll see down here with the 32 images. If you create one or two generated images, now you can get that higher resolution. So just something to be aware of there. So let's jump back over to NX Studio. So we're gonna go ahead and say that, let's just do one image here. We're gonna leave chromatic aberration corrections on. We're gonna set the destination that we want. We'll just leave it right here to the same path that the images are coming out of. And if you want it to, you could change the naming options as well. So we'll go ahead here and we'll click start. 
and I'll be back in just a second. Yeah. So now that we've got it done, we can actually go in here now and we're gonna look for this second file. And you'll notice that this image now has the merged tag added to it. So just going from the original, this is the original resolution here, just fitting within this window. But if we jump over to this one, now we've got the much higher resolution that we can zoom into. So obviously I wasn't perfectly in focus in this image. It was just meant to be a test image. So let's see how it compares to the other image. So if I zoom in to 100% here, let's choose this 18.140. That's as far as you're getting. But now if I jump over here to the merged image, so you can start to see there how shooting a landscape, if you want more pixels so that you can crop in later, how that can be beneficial. So that's it. That's all it takes. You can save this file off and now you can go import it into Lightroom or Photoshop and do any of the additional editing that you want to achieve. So now that you know how to fully utilize pixel shift imaging, if you're looking for accessories to enhance your Z6 III experience, be sure to check out this video to see the accessories that I recommend for the Z6 III.